one. Welcome to Haven of Horror. I'm Subject 879. I've got Milton Man Thing with me here tonight. We are going to discuss class a classic horror story. And no, that is not just describing the movie. That is the name of the movie itself. Uh, this is an Italian horror film released exclusively on Netflix over here, advertised as a Netflix exclusive. And it is about a group of people who are carpooling through Italy, trying to get home, as this is an Italian film. And they are attacked by a strange cult of people who want, who try to really murder them. Um, my best description of this movie would be it as Midsummer meets Scream. I don't know if anybody else agrees with me, but that is the feeling I had during this movie. Uh, so, Milton, I'm curious, how did you feel about a classic horror story? Yeah, I guess it's a pretty good mix description, I suppose. Um, you definitely get some meta elements, um, considering this is going to be a spoiler, like, you know, right for review, I guess, around it. Um, a classic horror story is actually, in a way, a self-deprecating title, because it talk it's in some ways uh, poking fun at the whole amateur film idea. And uh, how like each horror film, like from an amateur director, tries to be like the next big thing, and like tr and trying in some ways to like do that thing that like really gets people's attention. In this case, being a like almost a snuff film, like having the deaths of actual people like caught on film, but like giving it like this um, Italian mythological kind of like bend to it in in much ways like. Um, what did, what did we review like a few weeks ago? Um, you know, with the the demon with like no face, I, I mean no mouth specifically. I forget the name of the movie already, unfortunately. Oh, Sinister. Yes, yeah, Sinister. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that in some ways. We're like far off track there, but the yeah, there is definitely an element of like the like this like in sense or kind of like the scummy like movie director who tries to like get so close to it but in this case the director is actually being a very destructive person and involving innocent people you get some scream elements definitely with like the meta uh meta analysis about film and about uh like desensitization leading to violence and some stuff like that um, absolutely and of course full spoilers here i meant to say that before milton got into his uh description but it's fine uh, that should know how we operate by now uh yeah so i would i would go as far to say that this is a blend of movies that should not work you've got the cult in the woods killing people but also you've got at the end this meta they're they're doing this to make a horror film um yeah and the idea i think is that italy doesn't really make horror films as much anymore um and i just put this together as well milton but in the 80s, in the 70s, Italy was known for their gore fest. We reviewed yes. one, uh, Zombie. And you don't really hear about that anymore. So in a way, I think it's interesting that this movie is kind of about that. Nobody in Italy, like, makes horror, and at least not big horror that crosses, like, the to the States. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Italy is also known for the mafia as well. So the fact that the mafia is in decline is, like, another aspect almost of almost as if Italy is, like, losing its identity as modern times. So in some ways, like, the, the mafia being connected to, like, trying to make these horror movies is an interesting idea. It's very interesting to see how, kind of, like, they mix those two ideas together. If, like, the scum and villainy is now, like, uniting to just, like, make this next big thing to, like, have Italy, like, get, like, attention from the world again. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, um... It's interesting, and they they don't shy away from the gore and from showing you the disturbing things. I mean, the first kill in the movie is somebody having like a drill forced through his eyeball. It's very oh, uh, rest specifically, which is even more brutal than just like an automatic thing. It's like someone's actually making the effort. It's it like was a very seventies uh, and eighties Italian horror, which I would love to see more of that stuff. I'm not from very familiar with that area of, of horror yet. Um, should be noted as well that I watched this English dub and Milton watched this in the original Italian dub with subtitles. Uh, the English dub is is goofy at best at times, um, but I I really enjoyed this movie. 
it's it's not a super complicated film. I think there's definitely things to read into with it, especially like we mentioned with the kind of how Italian horror isn't as big as it used to be. Um, and how, like you said, you know, Italy's kind of losing its identity and there's definitely, you know, connections to, to the mafia, um, how ma the mafia is big in Italy. I thought the characters in this were serviceable. None of them really jumped out at me. I don't know if that was dub. What did you have any standout characters? The ones that are standout characters, like only really get their sort. They they only really find their footing in their identity towards the end of the movie, which I think is well, it's done on purpose. Are villains who the main character kills, like on their true natures are more revealed, like towards the end of it, with some some hints to it prior. Uh, our main heroine herself there's there's some of it there she's serviceable um but you definitely have some characters there who are just there to be killed which is it's a trope of 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 this entire genre it's hard to get away from just having like the extra characters that are there to be killed just something you have to deal with but i i thought they were okay definitely the strongest characters i've ever seen in the movie though I think we've had stronger stuff in some of, like, John Carpenter's films where, like, characters are allowed to, like, kind of punch up their dialogue quite a bit. With here, they are kind of just written to be, well, normal, which is the intention of it. They wanted to have normal kind of people just thrust into a very strange situation rather than them being over-the-top theatrical kind of character. Absolutely. Until, until the end in which they the th three of them definitely are, like the villains of that. So, absolutely. So, in the in a way, this movie kind of gives away its twist, which we'll get into in a moment. So, again, full spoilers for this video. Um, but I want to ask you, Milton, because, like I said, it kind of it sets up the twist at the end. Did you call it? I have a feeling that our uh, our um carpooling guy who actually has the RV, I had a feeling there was something weird about him. I didn't see too much prior. Um, but I had a feeling that because this guy was pulling out a camera and was acting a little strange at some times, um, I had a feeling that something was definitely weird about him that was probably going to be related to the plot. But I, I didn't see the rest of it coming. Um, I didn't expect the mafia to be involved. It definitely was a very strange situation because the movie didn't seem to have too much of a supernatural element coming out of the woodwork. I mean, you definitely got, like, Midsummer vibes, which is definitely obvious just based on how things are constructed. We did have certain sections where people think, oh, wow, we're making references to other movies. Maybe that's also going to be a theme of this movie as well because of, like, the meta narrative. I mean, we already started referencing, like, Evil Dead pretty quickly in this movie. So the, fa the fact that our filming friend had, like, an appreciation for horror movies probably had something to do with it, but that's all I could figure. It generally surprised me. At first, when when it first started getting a little meta, like you mentioned, they mentioned Sam Raimi and you know, um, like it's a cl this is a classic horror film. I was like, oh god, why are you being so self aware? Like, oh god, I get it. We've seen these before. Uh, so I was like, oh, this is, this is gonna be a miserable hour and a half. But the movie really won me over on that, and I thought it was refreshing. It's been a while since we've had a movie about movies. Uh, you have Censor, but that's a different thing. Like, it's not about... But at the same time, maybe that works as a reveal because you're not expecting it. Well, I mean, why would you see it coming specifically in the way that it does? Um, in some ways, it makes sense more in hindsight. But, I don't know. Do you want to have, like, obvious clues hinting at to where it's going, or would you rather be fully surprised? As I've seen through some movies, sometimes if the movie is trying to make itself seem smart, then yeah, it's good it's good to kind of pepper things to you know, throughout to like break like a breadcrumb trail that leads you to its conclusion. Other times, if it's there to just have fun, then I don't need it necessarily shown. But I think I think this movie is trying to do a bit of both. I was definitely suspicious of one of the villains. So mm -hmm. yeah. And we definitely got like no obvious signs like explaining anything like supernatural like the rv was like placed like magically next to the house or somehow they went up in a circle even though that wouldn't make any sense so 
there's definitely some suspicious things going on, certainly throughout the movie. Absolutely. Uh, so, did you find the doctor as unlikable as I did? Uh, I think he was written that way specifically. I mean, you have some of these character types that are like very pragmatic, and because they're so pragmatic, they're usually not liked by the general audience or by the other characters in the movie. So you definitely have that sort of type in the Doctor. Um, I didn't hate him, because there were reasons why he was acting the way that he did, and especially if, hey, we don't want to save this person because then there's there's nothing that we can do. We're just putting ourselves in unnecessary danger. So there is some practicality towards his action. He was a bit of a jerk, though, certainly. But it's but we, we've seen worse. Yeah. Um, so in the, in the Italian dub, I imagine that these are very close uh, in on the script level, you know, the dub versus the subtitles. Is it he, his explanation for kind of why he acts the way he is because he lost a patient? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the same. Now, the, the Italian original is fairly close to the uh, English dub in this. Although I prefer, I personally prefer hearing in the original language because I think it's much more natural and I'm not getting distracted by the ADR um, language if I'm trying to listen to it in English. You the know, ADR no, in this was really bad. Most Italian films that made its way over to the States definitely were. I do think there's a charm to it. At the same time, if I had a choice, I would definitely watch this sub instead of dubbed. But that's just my own personal. I agree with you on older films. It's got a charm, but it's 2021 and I've seen what we can do with dubbing. Yeah. The, the, for a major like Netflix film, this was pretty bad. It wasn't that bad. It was still noticeable, but how it's pretty hard. It's much easier in animation, certainly, to do dubbing and make it seem natural. Um, it's a bit, hard, bit harder in real life to do it. Now, Without like wrong. really scrubbing through shots and like splicing them together in weird ways that definitely make at what you're seeing to be less natural than you know language. So you know, but don't you get do? me wrong, it did not ruin the film for me. It, it amused me a little bit, and I think some of the performances are a little off in the English dub. Uh, but I think it is a, a necessary criticism to state that some of, I've seen better dubbing uh, in other live action movies like Shin Godzilla, which I would cover on the channel at some point. So, like we mentioned, this is a pretty gory film. Mm -hmm. And Melton, I haven't quite figured out what your limits on gore are because I know everybody has a limit. Was there anything oh. in this movie that made you go like, Ugh. I was almost anticipating to actually see the blades in the drill press actually physically go into the eye. Um, I probably would have cringed a little bit at that, but I still would have watched it. This film has not reached my limit yet for me. And I was amused when I saw the the evil girl and the guy just eat the shotgun at the end. That was definitely a fun point. Oh, the thing. girl made me laugh. She's like 13, and the main character just blows her away with a shot. And she's... And it's so... It's so satisfying just seeing the these two truly evil people just get completely humiliated and she had the thing in her mouth at the same time which i felt oh that's that's just mm, poetic right there it's like yeah. she's she's making herself like look vulnerable and she's actually actually truly vulnerable in this situation well Milton, i have to be honest i really enjoyed this movie but i don't know if there's a whole lot to say uh it's pretty straightforward and up until the end and i think what thematically is there we've talked about you know, with the reminiscing of the old 80s Italian horror films. But I guess I do want to ask you, did you have the same thing I did at first, where you were like, oh god, why is this so self-aware? It has to do with the idea, especially towards the end, we get an even more meta section where we actually see the Netflix film being reviewed on Netflix by a casual observer who just gives a thumbs down on a whim because he feels like he's not that into it. We're definitely in a time where we're, we have such such an influx a large influx of so many new types of entertainment and like movies coming out from both independent and professional filmmakers how do you have time to watch everything and what's going to get noticed what's going to get famous 
you could put in so much effort into your own passion project and it might only reach like a handful of people. It in some ways works the same way where we, we not bunting for views, obviously, but of course, when people do try some stuff and they feel like they don't get a whole lot of uh, views, it can be disheartening, which can sometimes prompt people to make more extreme and more uh, gimmicky stuff to just try to get attention for views. There, there's definitely that sort of thing going on because I feel like the villain would not be prompted to do this stuff if the market would, he felt the market wouldn't demand, you know, this extreme action. Not to say that, of course, he's justified in what he does, but as time goes on, if you want to get noticed in films, sometimes you have to do something that people, you know, will like, something that will get their attention. You know, what's the step up from the B movie, you know, gore fests or video nasties, like actual true snuff films? It's, a, it's definitely a very dark discussion, but realistic i wish we paired this with censor this would make an interesting double watch with something with censor like, you said there was not much to talk about i think that there is a very deep theme behind like movies like this especially um colorado productions which is a very interesting name for an italian uh no, sorry colorado film a very interesting name for an italian company and of course i know colorado is not an american and, and maybe I would need a second watch to pick up on all of it, because I, I think you're right, there is more than I'm giving it credit for, um, and some of it I may have just missed. But I suppose the last thing that I really can think about that I want to talk about is the post credit scene. Oh, John. What? Colorado's the name of a mafia crime family. Oh. Like an actual, like an actual real crime family um, from back in the day. I, I just, I just realized that, and that definitely has an element to this. That's really cool. That's interesting. Well, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, you're good. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of, of that. Um, but the only other thing I can really think of that we should go over is the post credit scene. Because I don't know if that was a little too on the nose or not. Or a little too meta, I guess I should say. Did you watch the post credit scene? I did. Um, the, the whole... Uh, we're talking about the, the part where like the guys on Netflix like looking at the movie. Yeah. I think you mean Bloodflix. Right. Sorry, not Netflix. Bloodflix. Yes, of course. The uh, strange hybrid child of Shudder and Netflix. But but yeah, that was that's what I was referencing earlier with uh you know the casual observer just like giving a thumbs down because he feels like he's just passing over the movie. See, I don't think it was just that because the comments because we see people commenting on it, and I don't understand mm -hmm. how this social this like Netflix gutter hybrid works because apparently people can comment on the movie um uh, i mean i guess that's a play on shutter because i know on shutter you can review films but everyone that says it's lame and doesn't look real which i thought was kind of fun well um everyone's a critic everyone thinks that if it's not real then the movie definitely pokes fun at, it, at itself quite a bit it's very it's rather self-deprecating so which it's an interesting angle. I mean, I I wasn't sure what to expect going in, especially with just the title, like, classic horror story or classic horror story. But I was pleasantly surprised, and I think uh, I think it was worth a watch. I'd watch this again. Um, One of the more interesting theming and elements that I'm still not quite sure where they were going for specifically, the Christ imagery of the pierced hands and how that goes into, like, the heroine's like actual journey of being able to escape is definitely an interesting idea. Like I, I guess there was the whole thing of like her being a sacrifice and that somehow going into like what Christ suffered or something, but it the parallel doesn't work exactly work completely. So I, I guess I'm a bit confused for what they were doing there. That that's one question I still why it was doing that. Maybe that has to do with the characters like constant like struggling like concerning whether or not she wants to have an abortion which is also a through line through this movie as well definitely some know. religious stuff i think but i that's a little outside of my area of expertise um so i don't have a lot to say about that part i, I can't give any answers from <laughs> maybe it might just be something that they have for the sake of having it in Constant like questions about morality or something. I don't know. Uh, so moving into my final thoughts, because I mean, like I said, I don't have a lot else to say about this movie other than the certain stuff that I picked up on with the 
history of Italian horror. Um, and I wonder if some of that is because I'm not well versed in Italian horror. I thought this was a pleasantly fun time. It's nice and short at only 90 some minutes. And the gore is fantastic. Uh, it's used appropriately. Uh, some of it's over the top, but I like over the top. So if you like over the top gore and like weird meta movies, I think this would be for you. Uh, I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. I would watch this again. And my final thoughts are, if you, this sounds interesting to you at all, watch it. A pleasant, a pleasant surprise. Final thoughts, Milton. Uh, I guess one other note concerning uh, the theming of the story. Um, also, Mistroso and uh, Cognoso. Um, I probably butchered the Italian pronunciation. It's based on an old Italian myth um, from like the uh, 1400s. So, um, you know, the movie poking fun of itself again is like, wow, those are very, you know, for, for Italian culture, very like, tropey like cliche kind of names for like villains or like a italian trio so if anyone's wondering what what that's about that's that's what it's from and you can do more research on that later um yeah if you guys want to uh, but yeah i i like this movie it's not my favorites but it's simple it's good and Despite the fact that it's very self-deprecating with, like, the idea of, like, it being called, like, a classic horror story, which the villain says, it's like, wow, it's like a classic horror story. I think that this could actually become a classic in some ways, at least of, of its time right now in this moment. I think it does what it's trying to do. I'll, I'll give props to it. Well, guys, we're only going to have one film review this week. A bunch of different issues came up. So I apologize for that, but we'll be back with our regular two reviews, hopefully next week. Uh, I have a couple of ideas. And oh. uh, I'm going oh, to try to... Yeah. We didn't give our arbitrary number system. I said a 3.5 out of 5. Oh, I didn't. Well, then I'll say 3.5 out of 5. That's a fair review. <laughs> Do you even <laughs> listen to what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, anyway... Uh, so, we only got to do one movie this week because of scheduling conflicts, so we apologize for that. Um, but we will be back with, hopefully, our next our two uh, movies next Saturday. And I hope you guys are liking this new format. I think it's a little bit better. If you are, let us know. And uh, I'm going to try to whip Milton into shape to get that Buffy Season 4 video out soon. And then we will start on Angel Season 1. Uh, if you guys are liking the content, let us know by hitting that thumbs up or subscribe button. We will be back next week with another review. Thank you for watching.